So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is drink the soda. But what I like to do is open these guys up. This fancy little thing that I got for Christmas. You just slap this guy on here. Carefully, make sure it's all the way on. Not going all the way on. There it goes. I think it's on. And then you spin it. It's got a bunch of little blades in there. percent of the way there there we go get that out of there and then enjoy some refreshing soda sharp bit but just want drink from the other side <sighs> delicious I like to start by cutting this thick rim with a pair of tin snips just to get through that double layer of metal then cut the rest of it with a pair of scissors because you got that long reach straight down back to the label then back to the tin snips and snip off that rim there you go and that gives it a little bit more flexibility to cut this part off so I'm going to follow right where it starts to bend bottom here, get that cut started. And with this, with my left hand, I'm pulling towards me this way and pushing with the tin snips and just unrolling the can. Being really careful not to cut your hands on the sharp metal. Then, still a little bit floppy, so put it on the edge of your desk and pretty gently coax it over the edge of your desk or the chair or your knee, whatever, to flatten it out. It doesn't take a lot. If you push too hard, you just end up bending it the other way. So, bend it a little, see how you do, bend it a little, and now we have this nice piece of aluminum to work with. Do that about. 20 more times. Okay, so this is my setup. So I printed the whole pattern on cardstock on my Cricut. So it's just the outline at about 60% scale. And now I'm going to trace that onto my cans. So I need to make sure that I'm not tracing them upside down because then I'll end up with the pattern on the outside instead of the silver. So. I have my reference of what they're supposed to look like in front of me. Make sure that I'm doing it right. Place it down and just quickly run around with it with a Sharpie. And I'm making sure to really define where the corners are, whether that be inside or outside, wherever there's a vertices, I need to know where that is 
so that I know where the folds are supposed to go. Because that's what defines it. Okay, and then I'll also mark what the letter is. Oop, wrong pile. That goes over there. Then I also have this full scale version that I quickly threw together with some tape just as reference so I know what the angles are supposed to look like and I know where each piece will go. So I can just look at the letter and say it goes next to Q, ready to rock and roll, right? So it makes it a lot easier to have this handy. But it'll be much smaller than that. <laughs> Something like that. We'll get them all traced out and go on to the next step. Okay, got them all traced out. Now let's cut them out. Now here you're going to want to cut the line off. Be as accurate as you possibly can so that everything fits together in the end. Now we have to crease all the lines with a small ball tool like this or you can use a pen or you know a screwdriver whatever you can find that works just to mark a line on the aluminum and the majority of these marks are going to be made on the back of your piece so all you have to do is line up your ruler and make sure that you offset the ruler based on the tool that you're made using because like this one, can you even see that? Not really. That uh, the line is offset from the edge of the ruler. Let me show you. That's where I had the ruler and that's where I made my mark. You see it's like a full sixteenth out. So make sure that you understand whatever tool you're using, the offset that it creates. <laughs> Otherwise all your marks are going to be way off. So. When you're making your mark, all you have to do, look at your reference. I know that this is piece O, so I'm looking at O on my full size reference. Lining up where my ruler goes, and not pushing very hard, a little bit harder than what I would press for handwriting, right? I'm just kind of rubbing it in. And the more that you press it, the steeper the angle will be. Okay, so let's see if I can show you this without my hands being in the way too much. Okay, so I'm working on this piece right here. And as I press that back and forth, the fold gets more intense. And you can keep going, you just keep doing it until it's the angle that you think you need. Right? Then after it's done, if you do need to fold it some more, you can just gently kind of pinch it down and slowly manipulate it so that it goes in the right spot. But that's pretty much it. You do that for all the folds and you're good to go. So what I was saying is most of your folds will be made on the back of the piece you're working on because that makes it a mountain fold so that it's like a little mountain like that. But occasionally you'll have valley folds like right there where it's dot dash dot dash those are valley folds those folds will be made on the front of your piece so that it ends up like a valley let's see like this all these are mountain folds and then this one right here I drew on the front of the piece to make it a valley fold so pay attention to that. There's not a whole lot of them, but got to do it the right way. So this is the first trophy mount that I've done. So it's a little bit different than a normal mask. It has this whole, it's kind of floppy, so it's hard to see. This whole separate piece. This is the wall mount. It sits on the wall like that. And then the mask sits inside of that piece 
like this, right? Like that, so then it's its whole neck and everything, and it looks nice. And then you can take the mask off and still have a mask. But in my case, I'm doing it at, you know, two-thirds scale, so it's not really wearable. I'm going to put these two together, and there's all this overlap um, that you don't really need when you're just trying to make this whole thing one piece. So I didn't build W or S or T, and I cut a bunch of stuff out of VZ, X, and U, and made different tabs. So that's what I've built so far right here. This is all I need, except for one more piece goes right here. Out of all this, when you combine them, this is all you end up with because <laughs> there's so much overlap, which is fine. I like that's that's really cool way to to display your mask. But when you just want a trophy mount to leave there permanently, this is how you do it. But then I also had to cut the way that I'm building it. I had to cut a hole in the back to be able to get my hand in there and put the pieces together. So this is drying. Come off. This is where we're at so far, and it's looking pretty freaking good. So we're gonna keep going, keep building, and just put one piece on after the other. See how it goes. This is what I'm using to glue everything together, and it's working like really good so far. It's pretty strong. So I'm really happy with that. So I'll see you in a couple hours when I'm further along. Okay, so it's not been a couple hours. I only did a couple pieces, but. This is where we're stopping with this one for now, I think. And then I'm gonna build my way back underneath. Is it this one? No, that's the back. I'm gonna build my way this way. So I'm gonna build my way from the snout to kind of the throat area and then come up and around and do the ears last because the ears have access through the holes. I have access back here to kind of do these pieces and stitch it all together at the end. So I've kind of set this aside for now and started working on the nose and that's coming out pretty well so far. And don't worry about getting Sharpie on this at all because it wipes right off with alcohol or acetone, nail polish remover, lacquer thinner, whatever you got, it just comes right off. You just wipe it. So we're gonna, after this is all done, we're gonna clean the whole thing. Uh, the only thing is that I would say don't glue yourself to the project. Starting to take shape. So now you can really see what's going on and uh, we're just gonna start filling this in and work our way to the ears. Now that it's all sculpted, the next thing to do is clean it up. And I really like how he has his little red ears. It's kind of cool. All we got to do is clean up the Sharpie and the super glue with a bit of acetone. So, like a couple of spots I missed, if you can see that. Like my fingerprint is super glued onto his face there, and a couple little dribbles here and there. Acetone will take that right off. So, like all these letters, you just wipe them right off with some acetone. <laughs> 